Hi, this is Miss Mayer, and today we're going to talk about Google Classroom and using it from a student's perspective for school. So first of all, I'd like to show you how to get to Google Classroom. There are a lot of different ways to do it, and depending on what device you're using, it may be different. On a computer or a Chromebook, I'd like you to open a new tab. So I'll show you what I mean up here at the top of my browser. When I click on this plus sign in a circle, that gives me a new tab. And on the new tab, I see in the top right this symbol that we call the waffle, and inside I see Google Classroom. Now, you may want to check and see which account you're logged in with right here and make sure that it's your school account. If not, you may want to add your school account or switch to your school account. So when we use the waffle, we may see the Google Classroom icon toward the top, or it may be way down here at the bottom. If you see it down at the bottom and you'd like to move it up, you can just click, hold, and drag these icons. So we can click right here and navigate to Google Classroom. If you're using a different browser or you don't see that button, you can also always type in classroom.google.com. If you see it autocomplete, you can just skip to the end there with a, a forward arrow, and then you can hit enter. If you're using a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, then you'll want to get these applications so that you can use Google Classroom effectively. All right, now that we're looking at Google Classroom, we want to join a classroom. If your teacher has already invited you with your email address, and you will have a Google email address even if your school or school district does not use Gmail, then you'll see a tile like this one where I see decline and join. Another thing your teacher may ask you to do is join with a code. In that case, what you'll do is click the plus sign in the top right-hand corner of your Google Classroom page, and then click join class, and then you will type in the class code that your teacher has given you, and then you'll click join. If you're only learning inside one Google Classroom, then this stream page with the upcoming assignments table is a good way to see what's due coming up. But if you're learning in multiple classrooms, you may want to use these three bars in the top left hand corner and take a look at the enrolled area down here and then the to-do list which will give you an overview of everything that's due in all of your classrooms. Let's go over the different parts of a single Google Classroom. The first page we're looking at is called the stream and the stream is like a running list of everything that's happened in Google Classroom. So this is kind of like on social media where old things get pushed down and new things come to the top. So this is usually not the best place to see all of your work organized. This is just a running list of what has happened in this Google Classroom. When we go to the classwork page, we'll see the organizational structure that the teacher has created. Now, it could be that your teacher is not using an organizational structure that includes these topics, but hopefully he or she is, and you'll be able to take a look at these topics individually by clicking on these labels on the left-hand side. Right up here in the top right, you'll also see the folder that has been created in your drive that is connected to this Google Classroom. And as you work on things and have them returned, your work will automatically go into this folder. And if I were you, I would not move anything out of this folder or change the structure around it all. Just let Google control that for you. It will do a better job of organizing than you or I will. Another area you may want to take a look at is the Google Calendar. Each Google Classroom has a Google Calendar associated with it, and it will show you any assignments that you have coming up right on the context of that calendar. If you want to take a look at only the classwork from one class, you can use these three dots out to the right of that classroom's name and choose display this only and you will see the assignments isolated from one particular Google Classroom. When we go back over to Google Classroom, we can also see assignments here. So a quiz, I need to take this quiz by May 28th. Let's take a look at this writing with sensory details assignment that, since it's due today at four. So when we click on this block, you'll notice that you also see a view assignment button at the bottom. I would recommend to you that you always go to the full assignment page before you start working on an assignment because there may be multiple links here connected to one assignment and you'll wanna see everything 
that you're supposed to do before you get started. There may be some a video here that you need to watch that has directions or something like that. In this particular case, I just have some instructions right here and I have an assignment. So let's go ahead and open up the assignment and see what happens. So this particular link has taken me to a web page where I am supposed to watch a video and now I can click back on the previous tab to go back to my assignment page and now this is actually my work. See how it says your work right up here. So when I want to actually pick that work up, kind of like if I'm in the classroom I could pick up a piece of paper that's my work, I can go ahead and click on this and my assignment will be created. When your assignment is created, your name will be added to the front part of the name of the assignment that your teacher has given the work. And then inside the assignment, you may see a blank document, a blank area for you to type, or you may see some uh, information about what to do on this page. So let's just pretend that we have gone ahead and completed this assignment and we're now ready to turn it in. Uh, I know this is the number one thing that teachers ask for is please show students how to make sure their work is turned in. So I'll show you that on this particular page in the top right hand corner I see this turn in button but a strange thing can happen sometimes you don't see the turn in button and if you don't I want you to remember that every page that has an assignment in Google Classroom has got a turn in button and there's also a place to add other files so if your teacher did not give you a template to work on but you're expected to for example type an essay or create something then what you can do is use this plus sign to add an attachment to this assignment that is what your teacher has asked for. This could be a video file, uh, it could be any file type at all. You can add it to this assignment using the plus sign right here. Once you've done that, you'll click turn in. Now this is a question we get from students a lot. What if I have turned something in and then I realize I forgot something? Well, your teacher may tell you not to unsubmit your work after the due date, um, but usually as long as it's before the due date, this is what you can do. You can click on submit and unsubmit and that will pull your assignment back and you will regain editing rights. So if I try to edit this assignment after I have clicked turn in, let me show you what will happen. So I've opened up my assignment after I've turned it in and as you can see I can no longer type on it. I don't have any of my controls up here. So what I want to do instead of requesting edit access which is going to send my teacher an email and my teacher is going to have to go in and do this for me. What I really want to do is go back to my assignment page, click unsubmit, unsubmit. And now when I go back to my file and I refresh see that I have all of my editing tools back again. I can work on my paper some more and then when I finish it I can go ahead and click turn in again. You do want to make sure even if you've clicked turn in once inside the document itself it's going to take you back to Google Classroom. You want to make sure that you have completed turning the assignment in by clicking turn in a second time. Let's take a look at some different ways that you can get help inside Google Classroom. One way is to add a private comment. The private comment, as you can see, is over here on the left hand side. And if I zoom in, you'll see that it says add private comment. So I can ask my teacher a question right here. So maybe I'm not sure. I want to check and see if today is really the due date or if I have a few more days. So I can send that. That's just going to go to my teacher and no one else is going to see it. But the comment that I just left could apply to my classmates too. And if I want to help everybody else out and I'm not giving any private information, then I could put that same comment over here into the class comment area, which is a place that we can use to ask questions about this assignment so that we can have a discussion with our teacher that the whole class can see. Just like with the private comment, I can put my comment into the blank and then click post. Another place that you might want to look for teacher comments or information is in your file itself. This is a place where your teacher might highlight some text and leave a comment for you. If you want to write back to your teacher, you can click on the comment, type underneath, and then click reply. Once in a while, this odd thing happens where a student accidentally deletes the work. So I'll show you what that looks like so you don't accidentally do it, but I think is we're just trying to open it and we accidentally click the X there and then it's really confusing because it looks like the work is actually gone. 
This is an easy way to fix it if you accidentally do that. What you want to do is you want to click your plus sign and go to Google Drive. And then you want to look for that file in your Google Drive. So even though you detached it from that assignment, it's actually still there in Google Drive. I want you to find the assignment. You can take a look at the assignment page to see what the title of it was if you have trouble finding it, but it will probably be in your recent files. I want you to click on that assignment to select it and then click Add. Once you have restored your work to the assignment, then you can click Turn In and Turn In. I want to show you one more way to get help inside Google Classroom if you need it. You can also always go down to the question mark in the bottom left hand corner and you can go to the Help Center. Inside here you're going to see a lot of frequently asked questions and hopefully be able to resolve your issue. Thank you for listening and watching. I hope you learned something new about Google Classroom that you can use and have a great day. Bye bye.